Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm Sister Naomi. And I am Sister Miriam. And we'll be hosting Sabbath School Online. Let's start by greeting everyone who joined us this lovely morning. Welcome to Sabbath School, children, children. Welcome to Sabbath School, children. Welcome to Sabbath School, teachers, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath School, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath School, Jesus, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath School, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath School, everyone, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School, everyone. I hope you had an amazing week with your family and friends. I know that God has been good to me this week and I praise him for it. What's your praise report for this week? Now that we've welcomed everyone, let's pray. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day that you have been with each and every single one of us. Father God, we ask that we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that, Lord, as we come together as one in Christ, we ask that, Lord, that you will bless our families, bless our friends. Keep us from harm's way. We ask that you will allow us, Lord, to increase in your word and your wisdom and your truth. We ask that we may continue to be the light for others and we may speak of your good name of your death, your resurrection, and your coming. We ask that, Lord, that you bless our family and friends. Keep us underneath your watchful eye. Bless this day. Bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, I humbly do pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we wish all those who are celebrating this birthday this week a very happy birthday. We pray that God will continue to bless you as you grow in his grace and favor. Before we start, this would be a good time to pause the video and begin writing out this week's lesson and the memory verbs. Ready? Ready? Let's, Let's begin. begin. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called, Now I See. The memory verse is from Acts chapter 9, verse 15. It says, This man is my chosen instrument. Today's message is God's love changes people. Imagine not being able to see anything. Everything is dark. You know it is day or night only by what other people tell you. For three days, Saul could not see anything. Saul sat quietly in Judas's house. He did not look at all fearsome or masterful. He was not the take-charge person he had been only three days ago. He sat quietly, his head bowed. He spent all of his time praying. There was so much to pray for. Saul had certainly prayed for forgiveness. He was horrified when he thought of the Christians he had persecuted. And he also thanked and praised the Lord again and again for his salvation. The memory of having Jesus call to him on the road to Damascus still thrilled him. He lived the moment over and over in his mind. Judas and his family offered Saul food to eat, but he would not take it. In fact, he would not even take anything to drink. Finally, they just left him alone with his thoughts. The news spread quickly through Damascus. Saul had arrived. Saul, the mighty hunter of Christians. The believers had heard he was coming, but now he was here. But it was said he was sitting in Judas's house. Rumor had it that he had somehow been struck blind. People learned that he had been led into the city like a child. Something strange had certainly occurred, but no one was quite sure what. Three days had gone by since Saul's encounter with the Lord. Then Ananias, a follower of Jesus, had a vision. The Lord appeared to him and said, Get up and go to Straight Street. Find the house of Judas. Ask for a man named Saul who is from the city of Tarshish. He is there now, praying. 
Saul is blind. He has seen you in a vision. You will go to him, pray, and lay your hands on him. Then he will see again. Ananias was understandably nervous. Lord, he answered, many people have told me about this man. He has done terrible things to your people in Jerusalem, and now he has come here to Damascus. The leading priests have given him power to arrest anyone who worships you. The Lord reassured Ananias, Do not worry. Go. I have chosen Saul for an important work, he said. He must tell people about me. He will tell kings, Jews, and people of foreign lands about my love for everyone. Ananias obeyed the Lord. As he walked to Judas's house on Straight Street, he may have looked around. Everything looked quite normal. Ananias shook his head. Everything was really far from normal. He had just had a vision from the Lord, and he was on his way to meet the dreaded Saul, whom the Lord said was now a believer. Ananias found Judas's house. He found Saul sitting quietly and without sight, waiting for him. Ananias was filled with compassion. He laid his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, the Lord Jesus sent me. He sent me so you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. And Saul asked to be baptized at once. He did not even take time to eat or drink. Yes, God had called Saul, and he had called Ananias too. They served the Lord for the rest of their lives. Today, God has called you to be his witness. Will you choose to listen? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giorgio Godoy. Audio is post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope that you enjoyed today's story, Now I See. Our story can be found in Acts 9, verse 10 through 19. Acts 9, verses 10 through 19. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus whom, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Today's memory verse can be found in Acts 9, verse 15. Acts 9, verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Last week we met Saul. 
Saul believed that the disciples of Jesus were blaspheming God's name by calling him the Son of God. So he started a crusade to jail and kill all the Christians in Jerusalem. But the church fled from Jerusalem and continued to spread the gospel around the world. Then Saul asked the high priest for letters that gave him permission to arrest Christians in Damascus and bring them to Jerusalem. Saul was prepared to persecute Jesus' people, but on the road to Damascus, Jesus spoke to Saul. When Saul rose from the ground, he was blind and could not see his way anymore. He remained this way for three days and did not eat or drink during this time. During those three days, Saul prayed, waiting for God to give him revelation. This is where this week's story begins. Ananias was a disciple of Jesus, and in a vision, the Lord spoke to Ananias. The Lord told Ananias to inquire about Saul of Tarsus at the house of Judah on Straight Street, for Saul already had a vision of Ananias coming and him regaining his sight. Ananias knew of Saul's reputation, and it wasn't friendly towards the Lord's people. Jesus reassured Ananias that he chose Saul for a mighty work. Despite any reservations Ananias might have had, he still greeted Saul with the grace and love of God, calling Saul brother as he would of any of the disciples. Ananias did as the Lord had said he would. He laid his hands on Saul that he might regain his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately Saul's blindness fell off like scales and he was baptized. Saul would remain with the disciples in Damascus for many days and there he would prepare for the ministry that God was calling him for. Parents, please take the time to help answer the following questions with your children. Question one, why didn't Ananias want to help Saul? How do you think you would feel if God told you to help a bully? Question two, why did Ananias go? Question three, why did God choose Saul? Question four, what kind of people did God choose to be leaders? And question five, what made it possible for Saul and people like him to be leaders? In summary, Ananias was sure of Saul's reputation for persecuting God's people. But despite this, he still did God's work and greeted Saul with the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Just as Saul realized that Jesus was the son of God, Ananias saw that God's grace makes a difference in our lives. God's love changes us, and when we treat people with God's grace and love, we are introducing them to the changing power of Jesus' love and grace. Grace is God loving the unlovable, pursuing after those who are running in the wrong direction, and even winning those who persecute his children. Grace is God's free gift of unconditional love that we don't deserve. God's love shines through the darkness like a light, and we can reflect that light by sharing God's love with others. As we pray, let us ask God to change our hearts to have love for him and others. Bow your heads and close your eyes to pray with us. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just being with us and keeping us and watching over us. Lord, we thank you for staying with us throughout this week, for guarding us and our families and answering just all of our prayers that we've ever asked you, from prayers that we asked for you today and prayers that we've asked in the past and the prayers that we'll ask for in the future. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, that you've always been faithful to hear us and care for us and most of all to love us. Lord, just like you've loved us beyond compare by giving us so much love and grace to the point that you even let Jesus die on the cross for us, Lord, we ask that you help us to share your love with others and that you help us to love you just as much as you love us. Lord, we thank you for just keeping us and watching over us. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 
Thanks for joining us in Sabbath School Online. Just like Bob and Larry always say, God made you special and he loves you very much. Shalom.